Hey y'all, Coach Nefi here, talking about the Feast of Tabernacles and what it is that we're supposed to do about the Feast of Tabernacles. Hold on, I might have jumped the gun. Y'all hold on. Hey, stay. I actually just started a video on what to do on the Feast of Tabernacles. I saw you walking by. We already recorded. You want to say hi to everybody? Hello. You want to do this class on what you're supposed to do with the fe on the Feast of Tabernacles? I'll wait for the next classes. What's the next class about? I'm not prepared. Um, the Honestly, blessings okay. of keeping uh, tabernacles, the blessings, the, what, what you get out of it. I'll be with you when you do that one, if it's okay. All right, well, I guess I'll catch you next time then. Okay, and I'll see you guys in the comment section. All right, so we're looking here in the book of Second Esther, is chapter 2. Now, I haven't really read this in a long time. It looks very interesting. It's talking about these palm branches. I found that verse when I was looking for this verse over in Revelation chapter 7 um, that talks about these people who have these palms in their hands. This is, we're going to find out, referring to the Feast of Tabernacles. And what I wanted to show you here is that these people who are keeping the Feast of Tabernacles are this great multitude. He said the one, the multitude that no man can number. I bring all of that up because what we see over here in the book of Leviticus 23, starting on or about verse 33, we see here the father is talking about the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, all the way through verse 36 is when he's kind of given the overall view of the Feast of Tabernacles, it seems to me, because in verse 37, he seems to be summing up the Feast of the Lord. Even down to verse 38 is kind of where he's, you know, talking about all of the feasts, probably even the Sabbath day and all of this. But then when you look at verse 39, you see he starts talking about the Feast of Tabernacles again. And to me, it seems like he is either um, explaining what it is that we're supposed to do on the Feast of Tabernacles or it's two different feasts like what we saw up here. It was talking about one feast where it's talking about doing an offering made by fire unto the Lord for eight days, having a solemn assembly. See, that's one way of celebrating this. To me, this seems like a way you would celebrate the feast if you lived in a city or was sojourning in a foreign land and you really couldn't, you know, do all that this is asking you to do. Like if you lived in an apartment or something, you don't have land to do all this that it's about to tell you to do on down here. So it seems like this could be one feast or it could be just in general. So I'm, 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 I see how both sides uh, see that. But let me know what you think in the comment section. Do you believe that there is a different way to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles when you're in the city opposed to in the wilderness? Let's chat about it down there. But what we want to focus on in this class is starting down here in verse 39, which says, And in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. And on the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. Now, this is one of the first times you really start to understand the Lord's Sabbaths because you're seeing when these days fall and then you start to understand that there is a pattern there and then you, you see how it, you, the Sabbaths work for the rest of the year. But you notice that in this part it's saying the exact same thing that we saw up here in verse 36 when it's talking about um, the eighth day. But notice verse 40, which says, And ye shall take you on the first day the bowls of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the bowls of thick trees, and willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. So here are these palm trees that we started off talking about, and here is how we celebrate what the, the, the feasts of uh, tabernacles. This is how we know that it is talking about or referring to that great multitude that no man can number because, you know, we understand that those garments that we were talking about were washed in the blood of the lamb on Passover. So we see it's really all about these feasts. And on this one, it's saying, and ye shall take you on the first day. So this would be that 15th day of the month, of course, during the daylight hours. You can see other videos when we talk about the timing of the 
feast day. But we do know that it is a Sabbath day. This first day of the feast is a, is a Sabbath day. And on that day, we are walking around with what I believe this is saying is branches. It says bows. And maybe we can look at a different translation. But I believe we're talking about branches of these good trees. You know, you got good trees and you got not so good trees. And these, you know, um, but then there it says branches. So maybe we should, let, let's, let's, for grins and giggles, let's go look at what it, what it says. All right, so we're here looking at the interlinear of Leviticus 23. And it says, and you shall take for yourselves on that day the first fruit. Now, that's interesting where it says the first fruits there. We we'll have to go look and see um, what the King James has to say about that. But then looking down here where it uses the word bows down here, we'll click on um, H. 6057 and yes it means branch a definition is a branch so all right well like i said that's interesting where it says that uh first fruits there so let's go look back and ye shall take on ye the first day of the bowls of goodly trees so it doesn't mention the first fruits there so now i think that's a class in itself you know that's a real entry. I've, I've never noticed that. Um, so we'll definitely have to come back and look at that. But here's how we celebrate. This is what we are supposed to be doing. Um, the first day is a Sabbath day. The eighth day is a Sabbath day. And then we're supposed to be walking around with these branches. So what we do at the Hillbilly Homestead is we go out there and we um, get branches from pecan trees and whatever trees we have. Um Growing, we'll get a, a not a big branch, just a little bit something to walk around and hold. And we walk around the property and sing songs and such. Um, and we do this, like it says there, for seven days. And then you see down here in verse 41, it says, And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. What we're really interested for this class is down here in verse 42, where it says, Ye shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelite born shall dwell in booths. All right, now, so this is really interesting, but, you know, we, we've got a surprise the last time. So let's go over here and let's look at the interlinear for verse 42 and see what it says. It does say booths there, so let's click on H5521. Sukkah is the transliteration, and it means thicket or booth. Uses cottage, pavilion, tabernacle, tent. So it can be any kind of shelter or, you know, even talk about canopies or layers and such. So to me, this has always been something outside of the house. You have people sleeping in cars, people sleeping under trampolines during this time. Um, we we are in tents during this time. Um, um, one of our viewers was telling us that they're sleeping in their Nissan because it's cold in their area. So when you, when you look at all of these definitions, you can see how people are doing it. Some people in apartments are actually sleeping under the table or in the dining room or wherever. But we see that we do have some flexibility in what we actually do. So let's go back and let's look at our verse again. It says to dwell in booths. Now, some people sleep in the booths at night. Some people eat in the booths. Some people just hang around in the booths during the day and then go back home at night. They're, 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 you know, some people have... Um, Bible studies in these booths. So I think there's some variation there too. So let us know down in the comment section how you will be dwelling in booths, what your booth will look like, and what you'll be doing and such down in the comment section. We'll save the next few verses for the next class when we'll be talking about the blessings of keeping tabernacles. And if you got anything out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, go ahead and hit the dislike button. But leave us a comment either way. And shalom.